about 3,000 of you subscribe, but only about 200 are getting notifications. So click the bell and click all. Hello, lovelies. I'm a bit worried about my American friends, particularly my more conservative uh, and right-wing American friends, because it feels to me like you're being gaslit by Trump on his way out of the White House, to the extent that some of you seem to believe that he is not on his way out of the White House and that some sort of enormous scam has gone on and the vote has been stolen from him, the election has been stolen from him, the presidency has been stolen from him in some way. And you're reacting to my criticisms of Trump and of the kind of stuff that's going on around the elections in the mirror image of the same unhinged way in which many people on the American left, by which I mean center right as opposed to far right, reacted to me saying, yeah, Trump's terrible, but he's not Hitler, which is a pretty reasonable statement. And as we're seeing unfold, you know, turned out he wasn't Hitler. So I'd hoped I'd gain some trust and respect from my attempts to be kind and charitable and to listen and to try and understand your point of view over these last years since 2014 or so, I, I guess, and the events of that year. Uh, but that doesn't seem to be the case any more than it was the case that I'd earned any trust and respect from my peers on the on the left or as has become increasingly apparent the, the pseudo left here uh, in regards to other things including the events of 2014 distance helps bring objectivity and I think I'm distant enough from the US to be reasonably objective not as objective as I'd like because a Biden presidency is better for the UK than a Trump presidency is, but still, yeah, I have distance, I have a certain amount of objectivity, and I hoped I demonstrated that over the last few years. Apparently not. I've not exactly made any secret of the fact that I consider Trump to be terrible, just not as terrible as many people on the pseudo-left were inferring, and I think his clumsy attempts at populism, had he actually followed through on any of them, might have turned out being quite good for America. If he'd actually done his infrastructure plan, for example, then that could have been good for the American working classes and the American economy and the American infrastructure, oddly enough, as a whole, rather than this whole wall boondoggle and, and nonsense. If he'd lived up to his rhetoric, he could have been uh, yeah, not good, but there would be a, a silver lining somewhere inside the, the separating turd that is Trump's presidency. But as it turned out, he was lying. But that was enough back then, back in 2016. You know, at least of the two candidates, he didn't have a track record of awfulness, other than personal awfulness, and he at least made the effort to lie to working class and, and middle America in a way in which his opposition didn't. He just didn't follow through. And his presidency has been objectively terrible for the United States. You might laud whatever peace deals you think he gained. I think he'll come to regret that in the future. You may laud his tax cuts, but they blew a trillion dollar hole in the US economy even before we get to COVID. And it was really just a payola for the top 1% combined with a short-term bribe to the middle classes, which will come due unless Biden does something. Uh, is it Biden or Biden? Unless he does something about it. And then his mishandling of COVID. 250,000 deaths, many of which, most of which probably were avoidable if COVID had been taken seriously. So after all of that, after your international humiliation for having Trump at the helm, and thanks for drawing attention away from our humiliation, cheers, after ruining your economy, after killing a quarter of a million of you unnecessarily through negligence, if you're still supporting him, 
then I have to ask whether Trump derangement sy syndrome is not a disease of the American pseudo left, but one of the right, the dear leader attitude, the, the thought that he can do no wrong, the willingness to die for this man's narcissistic ego. He would be a lot more dangerous if he actually believed in anything, but it seems like the only thing he believes in is Trump. And the, Biden is not a great candidate either. You know, he has done questionable, horrible things in the past. He has supported, proposed, passed legislation that is objectively terrible and horrible. It's just next to Trump, he seems like a shining example of reasonableness and a return to normality. Which still, <laughs> just as with the Obama presidency, it was obvious that there was a huge desire for change that Obama never followed through on. Trump won because there was a huge desire for change which was never followed through on. But unlike Obama, Trump was a wrecking ball, so now people are really desirous to return to normal. But normal is still pretty terrible. Hopefully we'll see the pendulum swing in the opposite direction and we might get some actual progressive and left-wing politics in the years to come, but I'm not holding my fucking breath. But Biden is less terrible of the two candidates and this seems to be obvious and objective. And yet, people are still supporting Trump to the extent of conspiracy theories. I'm not just talking the QAnon extreme, though that should be concerning, especially since a QAnon proponent has uh, won power, albeit unopposed, in American elections. But you, you, it does seem like you're being gaslit into thinking this is somehow an illegitimate election. Now, if we go back to 2016, people's concerns and fears about Trump appear to have been vindicated, just as over here, people's fears and concerns about Brexit appear to have been vindicated. And it no longer looks quite so crazy that people were pulling out all the stops to try and prevent Trump from ascending to the presidency in the first place. Faithless electors and so on, concerns about corruption were justified. Concerns about international standing of America were justified. Concerns about the democratic or undemocratic system, as the case may be, by which you elect your presidents, has appeared to be justified. Is it likely to change anytime soon? Probably not, because just like our own corrupt voting system, first past the post, and how undemocratic it is, whoever's in power really has no impetus to change the system that allowed them to take power in the first place, especially when it comes to narrow votes or failing to get the popular vote, as has been the case this last two times. Now, Russiagate wasn't entirely the smoke and mirrors that many of you seem to think it was. There was Russian interference. There was just no collusion, just as in the Brexit vote. There was Russian interference, amongst other illegality, far more serious than actually took place in the US. But there was no direct collusion between government and foreign agents. It still draws big questions over the 2016 election and over Brexit over here and many other things that have gone on. This was always something that Russia was very good at. PSYOPs, influence, blackmail, extortion, things like that. And, you know, Putin's ex-KGB makes sense. They were always very good at the great game. But that doesn't mean there was collusion. And the fact that there was no collusion doesn't mean that there wasn't Russian interference. But we have evidence of that. Now what we don't have is evidence of any underhanded mass corruption of the vote currently in the US. The lawsuits all appear to be vexatious, spurious, unevidenced hearsay. And if you want a decent summary of all of those cases, I strongly recommend the TLDR News channel. That's not TLDR, it's TLDR News. Uh, they have a separate stream, stream channel, TLDR News US, and they cover a lot of what's gone on there. More than I care to repeat in this video, so I strongly suggest you go over there and check it out. But the long and the short of it is that there is no evidence 
of any corruption or extra votes being added or anything like that. A lot of the cases have been thrown out. Some of the cases are to do with as few as 50 votes with some sort of minor interpretation of procedure. And the fact of the matter is that even if Trump won all of these lawsuits, he still wouldn't win the presidency. So that's that's really where we are. Uh, you're being darvoed, <laughs> essentially. And uh, I'm worried about you. Uh, people I call friend, even though I only know you online. I'm worried that you're being horribly misled, led up the garden path. I wouldn't say radicalized, I think that's going too far, but you're hearing what you want to hear and not thinking about it critically or objectively or from a distance point of view or really following up on what's actually going on. What they're doing is they're wallpapering your social media with all manner of claims. You can't possibly check them all or counter them all, so they just keep throwing claims until something sticks. But not re nothing's really sticking in reality, but it does seem to be sticking in people's minds, unfortunately, and creating an atmosphere of illegitimacy that doesn't really exist when you cut through to it. If you're in my audience, I would hope that you would be more skeptical and objective. That's what we should all strive for, right? That's why I object to nonsense coming from the pseudo left and why I object to this nonsense coming from the right. There's some other aspects around all this that I think people are being hysterical over in a way that they used to criticize the American pseudo left for. The fear of socialism, for example. Uh, Biden is not a socialist. He's not even left wing. He's a more moderate right, but not even particularly center right, given his law and order positions and, and various other bits. Biden is essentially a moderate Republican from five to ten years ago. He's a he's a Mitt Romney. He's not Karl Marx. <laughs> not that that's socialism anyway. There's nothing on his agenda that is socialist. And I know some of you are concerned that BLM, the official group, which does have some Marxists in it, seems to be demanding things of him. But they're not going to get them. He's already elected and he's extremely unlikely to stand for a second term given his age. He has no reason to give anyone anything. And it's not in his political character or his ideological character to move to socialism, let alone Marxism, let alone communism. He is a right-wing politician in an international context. So you have nothing to worry about there. He's just back to the neoliberal consensus really and he has plenty to be afraid of there but socialism is not one of those things to be afraid of there's a fear of AOC's lists from what I've seen it's not actually her running any list group and the project to keep a list of people who were involved in supporting and enabling the whole Trump situation is not directed at ordinary people you, you can't expect Robespierre to be coming around knocking on your door for having a Trump sign in your front yard. That's not going to happen. Rather, it seems to be about holding the administration to account. The people who aided and abetted Trump's criminal destruction and uh, ransacking of America to account and making sure that they're not forgotten for the role that they played in what's happened. That's far less sinister. If it does turn out that there has been any corruption around this election, I would think that you would want the people involved to be punished, right? And with this kleptocratic narcissist in chief having done a lot of questionable, almost certainly illegal things in his presidency, you, if that does turn out to be true, you would want him and anyone who enabled it or allowed it to happen to be held to account, right? just as you would have done had anything like that happened under Obama or should anything like that happen under Biden. And you have all these fears of a Biden conspiracy, of corruption, of dealings with Ukraine and so on, which don't really seem to have much merit. It's his son, unfortunately, who seems to have fallen into a certain crowd and traded on his relationship with his father hoping to get something out of that, but it doesn't really seem that there's any meat on those particular bones. 
unfortunately. It's uh, smearing guilt by association. There doesn't seem to be anything to it. But it's weird to focus on that and to ignore Trump's blatant and open corruption, his use of his own private facilities, thereby channeling public money into places like Mar-a-Lago, the appointment of his family to various positions in an obvious case of nepotism, his, his wholesale corruption, his cozying up to dictators, God knows what back deals would have been done, his use of his position to campaign you know, using the White House as a backdrop, things like that that are illegal. His flag-waving, foot-stomping nationalism should have concerned you. His open corruption and nepotism should have concerned you. And instead you're concerned about some possible influence peddling done by Biden's son with no evidence that anything has actually come of it when you can't say the same about Trump's open and obvious dealings involving his family, involving his friends, involving his business partners, involving countries that he has big financial interests in and wants to build hotels in. It just seems weird to focus on the splinter in Biden's eye and to ignore the forest of giant sequoias in Trump's eye. So I'm just concerned and a little bit disappointed. Yeah, I've made no secret of how I feel politically, what my ideologies are. I'm not exactly a, far, a fan of Biden and I would have hoped that I would have gained enough um, trust and respect despite my rhetoric that you would at least hear me out or take pause from what I have to say about this, from what I'm observing about this, but it seems not. Little reciprocity would go a long way. Zang. Aren't you a little tired of so-called horror media about shiny, sparkly, angsty, whiny monsters? I know I am, and that's why I created Actual Fucking Monsters, where you will play an actual fucking monster doing horrible and monstrous things and being tracked down and killed for it. By now at DriveThruRPG, post-mort.com or lulu.com. Word to your mom.